interferometry. How do we calibrate gauge blocks using interferometry? So absolute length interferometry is used for calibration of gauge blocks. So grade K gauge blocks, not higher, not lower perhaps. So primary length bar interferometer. So long gauge blocks are placed inside this. And so there will be a reference gauge block and interference between the two surfaces is observed through cameras. So that is called a Twyman Green interferometer. So we have two gauge blocks. One is a reference gauge block, one is an unknown gauge block. And then we compare the two lengths using this Twyman Green interferometer. Okay, so gauge block interferometer. So this is another type of, so Twyman Green interferometer is used for long gauge blocks. Whereas for short gauge block, we have the NPL type gauge block interferometer, where the gauge blocks are kept vertical like this. So here again, there's a platen and over which the gauge blocks are placed. Not be so clear in the photo, but. So we get a pattern on the interference features. So there is a gauge block kept on over a, a plate. So there is Interference fringes are created over the base plate and over the gauge block surface, between which there is a shift, which depends on the height. So that is used to, so we, we can measure only this shift, and then we can calculate the height. So this is the optical path of the NPL type length interferometer. So we have a lamp placed at the focus of a condensing lens. So this focuses and then uh, a collimating lens creates a parallel beam of rays. And then there's a constant deviation prism. So this rotates all colors by the same amount. So there is a prism. This prism can be rotated. So different colors can be obtained using this. So here we have we use white light, and the prism will split up into different colors. So depending on the position of this prism, the light which comes down will be of different colors. So we can create interference fringes of different colors using this constant deviation prism. So this one color light, monochromic light, is made to pass through the optical flat and over this. So we have a platen which can be rotated and over which the gauge block is run. So this is the gauge block which you need to measure. So interference light which falls on the flat platen is reflected back and light which falls on the top surface of the gauge block is also reflected back. So between the two, there is a height difference resulting in a path difference. And so between the two, there will be interference fringes. So there will be a shift of interference fringes like this. So what we actually measure is the shift in the fractional shift of interference fringes. So if the lines match, then the shift is zero. Then slowly it increases and then reaches the other end for a one unit or one fringe width shift. So this is the working of the interferometer. Then absolute length measurement. How can we measure absolute lengths using this interferometer? So that is a very interesting idea. So the interference between rays reflected for the gauge block and rays reflected from the platen. So this occurs. Path difference causes displacement of fringes. 
So when the path difference is an exact multiple of wavelength, the fringes will be match. And for other path differences, the fringes will be shifted. So this is a Michelson interferometer. So half silvered mirror, so light source, half of it goes back, comes down, down, comes up. Uh, okay, this is the viewpoint. So from here it goes, goes up, comes back, goes up, this right comes back, and between these two there will be difference. So the modern interferometer, so Nowadays, we don't use the old method of viewing through IPs and all. Instead, we have PCD cameras, which, so here, so reference flat, gauge, so Okay, this is the diffuser. So we use the light sources also nowadays used is a laser instead of the constant deviation prism. We use a laser interferon uh, source. So the light is made parallel by this collimator and sent down, and then we have the beam splitter. So Part of it goes down, goes up, comes back, and part of it is reflected directly between these two. The, okay, it goes to the right, and between these two, there will be the light which is reflected from here, and which is reflected from here, there will be interference between the two. So interference fringes are viewed using a CCD camera. And there are sensors to measure pressure, temperature, humidity, etc which will compensate for the wavelength. So wavelength depends on all these parameters. So that's why we need to measure these and determine the wavelength of light. So using different wavelengths, the number of fringes cannot be counted. So the total number of wavelengths, the height difference, we have to see how many fringes are shifted. But how many, the total, if it shifts by a certain number of fringes, that cannot be counted. Only the fractional shift remaining can be counted. So how can we determine the absolute error, length error using this fractional error? So it is possible if the error is very small. Okay, so assuming that the difference between the reference surface and the gauge block is very small, we can determine the error. So the basic idea is this. So suppose we have an object of length 7.5 mm. You have a scale of length 2 mm. So 7.5 mm object, if you measure with a 2 mm scale, how many units will be there? It will be 3 into 2, 6 plus. 0.75 into 2, that is 1.5, 6 plus 1.5 is 7.5, okay? So that means this length of 7.5 is 3 units of 2 mm, and 0.75 into 2 mm, so 3 fourth of a single unit. So now suppose this length was measured using a 3 mm scale, then 3 mm, 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 0.5 of 3 is 7.5. So both will give 
But the problem is, suppose we cannot count how many of this 2 mm is there. So this part we cannot count. So we are unable to count. So same is say with interference. How many full interference flinches shift is there, we cannot count. But the fractional shift we can determine. For example, if this 7 is certain number of 2 mm, plus the fraction is 0.75. Similarly, it is certain number of 3 mm, plus the fraction is 0.5. So you know only these fraction. We don't know how many whole length shifts are there. How can we determine the length of this object, the unknown length? Suppose we don't know. We know only the approximate length, 7. So how can we solve this? So we learn the root force approach. So we know the fraction is 0.75. So it can be the one shift of 2 mm, because one scale is 2 mm. So it can be 2 plus 0.75 by into 2, or 4 plus 0.75 into 2, or 6 plus 0.75 into 2, or 8 plus 0.75 into 2, or 10. So this is increasing by 2 mm. So this length can be 3.5, 5.5, 7.5, 9.5. So the fraction we know, it is 0.5. Then, with the other scale of 3 mm, it can be 3 plus 0.5 into 3, 6 plus 0.5 into 3, 9 plus 0.5 into 3, 12 plus 0.5 into 3. That is, it can be 4.5, 7.5, 10.5, or 13.5. So now both of these should match. So 7.5 matches the 2, 13.5 also matches the 2. Which is correct one? We don't know. So, but if you are known that the approximate length is 7, then we can take 7.5 as the correct length. Since approximate length is 7, the true length should be 7.5. So this is the idea of length measurement using brute force method. So in the NPL type gauge interferometer, the height difference between platen and gauge block length, so that is the length of the gauge block, that is equal to certain number of full interference flinges, but a certain fraction into lambda by 2. And we can get different lambdas by rotating the constant deviation prism. So we get for different lambda, we get the f. So f is obtained for different wavelengths. So determine L without knowing N. So this is the problem. So approximate length L is known. So the actual length N can vary only by a few integers. So this is the assumption. Approximate length L is known. So N can vary only by one or two wavelengths. It should not be more than that. OK, so N. If you know the approximate n, then plus 1n or plus 2n or minus 1n or minus 2n, that will be the correct length. So determine approximate n equal to L by lambda by 2. Ch calculate L changing n by a few integers. And then determine best matching L. Calculate average length L. For example, nominal length is 9 mm, approximately 9 mm. So it should be close to this. And suppose we used different colors of light, red, green, blue, violet. And we got the whose wavelengths are known as here. And the observed fractions we have obtained from the NPL type interferometer. So this is now, this is the experimental result. How do we determine the exact correct length of the gauge block? So we know these fractions. So we find out the approximate n for each color. Okay, so 9000 we know, so it should be somewhere here. Then determine the length for 
n minus 2, n minus 1, n, n plus 1, n by 2, n plus 2. So you reduce 2 lambda by 2, 1 lambda by 2, etc., plus 1 lambda by 2, plus 2 lambda by 2. Get the different lengths. So this is these are the possible lengths for red color. Then for green, also determine the possible lengths. For blue, determine possible lengths. For violet, determine the possible lengths. And now we have to check which of these are matching. So 899.03 is not there, so 0.35, no, 0.68, no, 9000.021, okay, 9000.00 is same as 9000.05, but, okay. So plot length versus color. So it's difficult to get from directly, so we can plot a graph like this. So which length is matching all? So this is not matching the others. But this, yes, it is almost matching. So all four will give the chain length 9,000.3. Best matching length is 9,000.324312. So we don't know which one is correct. So we take the average as the correct length, 9,000.32. Okay, so this is an extra problem. Okay, so we can do it home. Okay, so that is the length measurement using brute force method. So with that, we'll conclude for the day.